Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. And in this roundup, we've got some cool updates and we've got some helpful information as well. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Marco Russo's got a blog post talking about calculation groups. This was a feature announced at SQL Bits for SQL Server Analysis Services 2019 which was just released in CTP 2.3. So if you're not on 2.3, make sure you download that version to get the latest edition, which includes this feature. This has also been referred to as Calc Members. This is a really awesome feature that a lot of folks have been waiting for. This was actually also called out that Marco and Alberto's book called Definitive Guide to DAX, the second edition of that, was delayed based on this feature. Marco goes through and gives his thoughts of what to expect with this feature and does call out that long-term thinking from a best practice perspective. It's too early to tell. It's gonna take a lot of time to figure that out, but he does go through and call out some of the awesome things that you can get with Calc members as well as some of the current limitations of it. This isn't in Power BI yet. Hopefully it will come down the road. I'm sure it will at some point, as well as Azure Analysis Services. But for right now, it's in the box version of Analysis Services. Marco also points off to a detailed blog post talking about how to actually use this feature. So be sure to check it out. Links down in the description below, as well as links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Josh Crittenden over at Blue Granite has got a blog post talking about the new key influencer visual that's in Power BI Desktop. This is a preview feature, so be sure to turn on the preview feature if this is something you wanna use, but he walks through how to actually use this visual with your data set. There are some limitations which are called out, and also you need to have a specific data set in order to actually use this. There has to be certain groupings, and a certain amount of rows in order to take advantage of this in order for that machine learning model to actually be able to train itself. But once you've met those, you can actually get some cool insights into your data with basically just dragging some fields onto the visual itself. It's that easy. So if you're curious about the key influencer visual and wanna learn more, check out the blog post down below. There is a new white paper that is out called the Power BI Premium Deployment and Management White Paper. This is a white paper that's near and dear to my heart. If you are using premium capacity or even the Azure Power BI embedded capacities, you want to download and read this white paper. It is a little bit long, but it is worth it. There is a ton of useful information in there. It also goes through and points out some scenarios of how to use that premium capacity metrics app and how to discern information from it. So again, if you're using capacity, definitely read this white paper, it will help you. There's a new admin setting available which will let you configure some of the help and support links that are available inside of that question mark dropdown inside of Power BI. So for instance, learning more, support, licensing, things of that nature, you can configure to use customized links that go to your organization's help pages and that will allow you to direct your users to the right resources inside of your organization. So if you're an admin of your tenant and you wanna take advantage of this, check out the blog post down below with the how-to. There was an update to how Azure AD B2B works inside of Power BI. So this is business to business. This is allowing guest users into content or sharing content out to guest users outside of your tenant. One of the challenges with this in the past was that you had to give them the direct URL to that report or dashboard that you shared and they couldn't really consume it from the overall Power BI portal experience. So they had to keep those specific URLs saved in order to return to that content. The update allows them to actually specify the tenant ID in the URL, which means when they go to app.powerbi.com with that tenant ID in the URL, they will actually see the Power BI portal of the target tenant. So if I'm in Guy in a Cube and I wanna see content that's sitting in Contoso's actual tenant, I can put that flag in, I will log in with my with my credentials for Guy in a Cube, and I will see Contoso's content in app.powerbi.com, so the entire portal. So that means I can see apps, I can see dashboards, I can see reports. There are some limitations with this, so be sure to check out the blog post for what those are. So this is a great step in order to consume content from other organizations to allow collaboration across them. 
All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. For me, I've gotta go with the premium white paper just because, like I said, I've been dealing with a lot of customers on that topic and it's near and dear to my heart. But I wanna hear from you. Go ahead and let me know what your item was. Maybe it's something I mentioned, maybe it's something I didn't. Leave it down below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.